What is up YouTube and welcome to another review from Matt Waters. Today we're going to be reviewing an item that I purchased from Wish.com and that item is this bottle cutter and as you can see we paid about roughly 20 bucks to get this shipped from China which isn't too bad if it does what it's supposed to do. Now it's got all these different adjusting points where you can lock them down, you can make it bigger, smaller for whatever size bottle that you're going to cut. Today I have large wine bottle, I have a regular size wine bottle, I have a pickle jar, some beer bottle, got a cream soda bottle, and even an apple juice bottle. So we're gonna give these all a try and see if this thing works like it's supposed to. All right guys, so this is what you can see. This is what it looks like. It's got these wheel rollers inside right here. And this is the point that's gonna cut on the glass right here. And you can see it's got these different tension springs, right? So you can lock it down and clamp it and stuff. But you can adjust these right here on these points to make it wider so you can either fit different size bottles like for example like this is like your standard like beer bottle type root beer bottle type size and as you can see it's different from that so you need to be able to adjust it so we're going to try it out on some different bottles so let's go ahead and give the first one a try all right guys and also felt the need to go ahead and let you know that mine did not come with instructions yours may come with instructions if you order one but mine did not so had to kind of figure it out on my own here but it wasn't really that hard so all you gotta do is adjust your different points right here and get it to the size so that the bottle can fit just like that all right so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to show you right here is we're going to clamp it down on this side like push it together all right, so that's clamped. I'm gonna tighten this side up. All right, so now I'm gonna clamp this side down. And right, I'm gonna tighten this side up now. All right, as you can see, it's in there and it's kind of rolling in there, you know, it's not too tight so you can spin around. Now, as you can see right here, that's the little diamond blade piece, right? So we're gonna go ahead and lock this thing down too. And then we're gonna spin the bottle. And you can hear that it's etching into that glass. So I'm just giving it a couple of little etches. And you want to keep it straight so that it doesn't roll on you. And the bottle cracked. So that was a no-go on that bottle. All right, so we've broken our first bottle. All right, and now we're going to try the beer bottle since it's already set to about the same size. This time I'm just going to loosen the tension just in case it's because I had it too tight. So now I'm going to place it about right there. That way it's not too close to the butt edge right there. Lock that down right there. Lock that down right there. Lock that down in the top. And this time I'm just going to give it just a little tension, not too much this time. All right, so that's in there. I'm going to start spinning and see if it'll etch a line, but i got to make sure this is down. All right. And you can see, I'm going to get it up close for you, you can see, like, as it's etching a line. Alright guys, so now you can see that we have our line etched all the way around the bottle, so now we're going to take it out of this cutter. Alright, so according to online, now that we have our line etched and the bottle didn't snap like the first one, we're supposed to take rubber bands and put one over on this side and one on this side of the line and we're going to run hot water over it first 
and then we're going to instantly immediately change it to cold water and then it should break off clean so let's give that a try all right and you can see here is where we etched our line around the bottle and i took two rubber bands and i'm lining them up right against the lines right here that way they can kind of separate the cold and the heat of the water right there so we've got that going right there um, what I'm going to do next is, is I'm going to boil me a little pot of water and then I'm going to make me a big cup of ice water that way the, the temperature is streamed because I don't think your faucet in your kitchen is really going to be able to make that high temperature change that drastic change so we're just going to take a bowl of boiling water and then we're going to take a cup of ice water to pour on it all right, so now I have my boiling water and my ice water. So let's see if this thing works like it's supposed to. I'm going to stick this in right there. And get it real hot for a second. Hey, there we go. And that worked, just like it was supposed to. So it did work on this type of bottle. This is like a normal a beer bottle. And you would then need to go around with some sandpaper and just sand the edges smooth. But it's pretty smooth as it is, but you just want to make sure nothing's going to cut you. So yeah, now you could take that bottom half right there and you could put a wick in it and fill it up with wax and make you some beer bottle candles or you could take a diamond bit and drill you a hole right through here and hang it up and make like beer bottle lights or something make really cool amber lights all right so let's try another bottle out all right so now we're going to give it a try on this apple juice bottle right here let's stick this in right here and let's see See, if it's weird shape, you're not going to be able to get your ring around it, right? So you need it to be the most bottled part of it, like how it goes to a weird shape right here. You could probably get it to get on a line about right here or something, but when the shapes get irregular like that, it really makes the wheels go off track. I'm going to show you an example with the wine bottle right here. Is this wine bottle, normal wine bottle, right? But what I did notice is the edges right here on these coming down this seam they're not completely flat and smooth they're a raised edge right so whenever i had it locked on and just spinning it what it was doing was jumping the track every other little spot like every time you go around one time it would just keep jumping the track jumping the track and that's because it's not a perfect cylinder shape so you might have to adjust or go a little slower and try to keep it lined up Get it tightened up, but not too tight. If you do it too tight, it's going to snap your bottle. And I think that's what happened on the first one we did. All right, so I got the diamond bit right there. It's locked down. Like I said, you pull this up to release. You lock it down to lock it in place. So it feels nice and tight enough to go ahead and roll it. So I'm going to roll it and see what happens. And again, that had that same type of seam going down the side right here. So as you can see, it jumped track right in there. It should have lined dead on with that one. So it's not looking good on the lineup part. Of it. And see, that's just not good right there. That should be only one single line. And it gives you like 10 different lines, it seems like, just going in one circle. One end should meet with the other end. Like if it starts the etching lines right here, then it should be able to go all the way around and line up. But no, not on this bottle. It kept jumping the track, just like on that wine bottle I showed you guys. And it's because of the seams. So you gotta be careful about the seams of the bottles. And if you'll notice right here, let me find it. That one has a weird seam on that bottle too. And this one's more like, see this one's more like a single seam right there. And on this bottle, 
there's a double. Let's see if I can get it. There it goes. See it right there? And that right there, that indention of a seam, is why this bit is going to jump track. Because when it goes to go over that, instead of staying tight in contact, it's rolling over and it's letting it just start wherever it wants to. And that's where that funky line is going to come from. So no go on this apple juice bottle. And it's going to be a no go on this wine bottle right here. So let's try a different bottle. All right, now we're going to give the pickle jar a try. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try something different right here since we was having some bad luck with the seams on jars, right? So what I'm going to do is I've already stretched it out. I'm going to put it in backwards like this, flat on the table. Lock it in just like that. Tighten it up. Alright, like I said, it's nice and tight right there. This part's locked down. That's now locked. That's now locked. It's flat. So let's see if we can get it to line up. Nope. Alright, so that actually lined up nice doing it that way. So I'm going to take this off. And we got a perfect seam going all the way around. Both points met up just right. So let's go ahead and try the water process on this one and see if it works. Alright, so here's the boiling water. So I'm going to stick this in there. Let that just kind of warm up for a second, and then we'll go to the extreme temperature change of the cold. All right, so I think that's good enough on the boiling water, so now I'm gonna stick it in this ice cold water. There it went. So it will work on a pickle jar. We now know that. And it actually made it nice and pretty perpendicular. It's nice. Awesome. So there we go. We got our uh, pickle bottom now. So let's move to the next one. All right, for this last test, we're going to use a bigger than normal size wine bottle right here. So we're going to go ahead and give this a try right now, guys, and see if it'll work. So what I'm going to do is we've already stretched it out all the way to the max that it will go. And surprisingly, it will fit. Again, it's another bottle with one of those funky seams. As you can see how it go, it raises up and then smooth and then drops right back down right here. Then that's what's throwing it off every time as we come around. You can see right here. All right, and that's going to be a no-go on this bottle too because of the funky seams again. See this funky seam right here? It's throwing the track off. If this thing could learn how to self-adjust itself as it's turning, because all it is is it's going to just lock down like that's it fixed position it doesn't move it goes right over it so if something's too low right here it's going to jump right over it and just catch the next whatever's over that hill and that's going to set its new track so it does have a little struggle with keeping it straight on the track um like i said it worked real good with that one bottle when i had it 
just flat down on the table and spun just the bottle part instead of actually spinning this piece because this piece does not want to stay on track the right way. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for today's review video. I'm going to give this out of five stars. I'm going to give it three stars because it does work on certain bottles. But if it has a funky seam line, it is not going to work at all. It does not know how to adjust itself. So three out of five is not too bad. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And be sure to like and comment down below what you think of this. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel for more. Have a great day, guys. Peace.